I maintain one uh, site, which is uh, a static site that I, of course, uh, uh, maintain on uh, my GitLab because on GitLab you can host uh, a static site for free. Now, in this video, I don't really want to talk about uh, hosting a static site on GitLab. I have talked about it on my other channel. But today, I, I actually wanted to show you something really interesting and cool. And that is uh, using uh, webhooks uh, to create a Jira issue. Yes, Jira issue from uh, GitHub or not GitHub, but GitLab. I mean, you can do the same thing on GitHub as well, but I will be showing you how to do it on GitLab. So in this example, I will uh, basically push changes to my GitLab repository. And whenever I make uh, a push, I will uh, I will create a Jira issue. Now doing this uh, is extremely easy and you won't even feel that you're doing an automation, you're integrating two different tools. But yeah, that is the that is the best part. Now, this is the site that I was talking about. This is of course uh, a simple HTML based site where I have nothing but, uh, of course, my name, my pictures, and you know a few other things. But uh, I maintain this using uh, my repository on uh, on GitLab. So this is of course the site, all the files. And usually, when I make a commit on my local computer, I have pipelines set up that will pick up any new commit. Uh, any new push and it will uh, it will deploy it will deploy the site for me now all that it all that is great and it works wonderfully well but today i thought let us uh, experiment with uh, the incoming webhooks in uh, in uh, automation for jira so what i'll do i will create a new rule where i will use one uh, one trigger called incoming webhook now when you when you configure this webhook, and by the way, we talked about this webhook in one of the previous video, where we learned how to basically trigger this uh, webhook. Basically, you can, uh, I mean, when you while you're on this page, you get some examples. Like if you want to test this web webhook, you can do that using curl by passing, let us say, something in the data. Like maybe if you are passing a um, um, couple of issues or maybe maybe additional things, and you can capture it and you can process them. But in this example, we'll not worry about the issues because we are simply going to trigger this or call this uh, URL or this webhook URL. So I'll copy this URL uh, from my automation rule. And what I want to do, I want to do something with this. Like whenever, so basically, first of all, when you, uh, I mean, you have the option to call this webhook in your GitLab. So when you go to your GitLab, I will go to my uh, my repository settings and then i will go to the webhooks now here you have the option to copy this webhook and of course don't share this url with anyone else i will after this video i'll delete this uh, url and um, wh what i want to do is i want to basically uh, call this webhook in jira when something is pushed uh, in my repository or whenever there is a push now when you push uh, in your repository, like let us say you made some changes, and you you commit it, and you want to of course ref maybe maybe push it to your main branch. Uh, you can of course mention the branch name, like only call this uh, this uh, webhook when uh, when when you you push to the master branch, and you have other uh, other events like uh, you have uh, merge request events, you have job events, you have pipeline events. You can take a look at dif different events. And these things are quite similar on uh, Bit Bucket and also GitHub. Um, so uh, you can, I think the same thing is applicable. But in this example, of course, we'll be using GitLab. So once you configure this webhook, you can then go back to your uh, to your uh, plan, not not plan, sorry, your rule. Why I'm calling it as plan? I, I was actually working on uh, advanced roadmap. I was looking at one of the question on my channel. That is why I'm using the word plan, but this is not a plan, this is a rule. So let us add uh, a new component. And what we want to do whenever there is a new push, we want to let us uh, create an issue. That is it. Simple thing, but uh, I think it will give us uh, a very good idea. Now, we want to create a new bug maybe, or maybe a task in uh, Android project or any project, basically, it is up to you. 
and you can set the field if you want like for this example we will uh, uh, simply uh, sim simply use uh, this uh, summary issue created from webhook and the good thing about these webhooks is that uh, if you look at the GitLab, GitLab documentation whenever the webhook is called uh, for different events for example if you're looking at uh, I believe on the right hand side there is a push event you can see the body of the I mean when, when that webhook is called from GitLab to Jira you will get this body and, and in this body you will have different things like uh, the project name and uh, the repository name and uh, the web URL. So let us try to retrieve some of these uh, things. You can also retrieve the commits, I believe. Uh, I mean, if you have, I mean, your your push can have multiple commits. Commits, maybe for one of the commit you want to pick up the commit name. But for this for this example, let us uh, let us pick up uh, the project. So what you can do is you can uh, uh, go to your uh, to your uh, um description i mean maybe i want to um do something in uh, my summary so you can access because it it is a json file so you should be able to access the webhook data using a webhook dot i believe uh, i believe we looked at this in uh, one of the previous uh, example i might go and take a look at the webhook and uh, Basically, okay, so you have to use webhook data. So this is something that you need to use. So just copy it and then go back to your uh, to your uh, summary. And what I want to do is I want to use the project name or maybe the uh, maybe the, the repository name. So repository name. So what I what I'll do I'll use uh, dot repository. dot name and uh, i want to also add a, add something in the description i mean if you want you can print the whole uh, json file it should work i guess but uh, let us uh, let, let us do few things only like repository name is this and uh, maybe we want to also look for something else like maybe you want to use the url like repository dot url i guess so let us copy this and dot URL so that uh, you can see you can go back to the original uh, repository from where the push was made you can you should be able to access the commits I guess uh, you can access them like by using dot commits dot first dot last and so on but uh, I think this this is fine. I think uh, I think this this is enough. So what we'll do, we'll uh, save this, and we will give this a name. So like for example, it is a GitLab or maybe webhook hyphen GitLab hyphen push. So I'll turn this on, and uh, what I can do, I can uh, then go to the audit log to monitor. So we'll we'll do something with the repository, and the good thing is that we can always uh, go back to the GitLab configuration and we can test it. So there's an option here called uh, push event. So let us push the uh, let, let us test the push event, and it says hook executed successfully. HTTP 200, and uh, I'll go back to my rule. I'll refresh it, and it worked. It worked in one go. So Show, show more and it says issue created successfully AN51 and we'll take a look at the issue and let us see let us see what we have in the um, in, in the issue so we have uh, the uh, issue created from and the repository name and we also have the repository URL so this this works wonderfully well and I think uh, you can do a lot of other things like for example when you have the whole body uh, if you look at the JSON body here, you can uh, of course uh, maybe use regular expression. We, are, we also talked about regular expression and look for something specific if you want. And uh, maybe you can also take a look take a look at other events. Like for example, uh, if you look at the webhook configuration, 
you can uh, you you can trigger this uh, using uh, uh, I mean we have we have different events. I think usually people prefer let us say merge request events. Like whenever there is a merge request, you can uh, do something with the uh, with your Jira issues if you want. Maybe you want to uh, change the status. Something similar to the trigger workflow triggers in Jira. So this is actually quite simple to configure. It takes only a few minutes. And uh, the good thing is, and the great thing is that you can actually um, do all of that uh, um, without writing much code. I mean, you're just using automation. There's also one more thing that I noticed on GitLab. I never really tried it before. But if you look at the GitLab configurations, there is something called as integration. So apart from using webhooks, you can actually hook up your GitLab to other tools. You can link it up to tools like uh, maybe uh, I mean there there are I mean there is a list like Asana, Bugzilla, Atlassian Bamboo, and uh, Jira. So there is Jira here. So you can actually also take a look at these uh, inbuilt integrations. But I think uh, when you are using webhooks, you I I guess uh, in the beginning if you want to do something similar to what I just did, or if you want to do something simple and you want more control, I think webhooks can be a good way. But do also take a look at these GitHub, GitLab, um, GitLab integrations. And and as I, as I mentioned before, you can do something similar on Bitbucket, you can do, you can do something similar on GitHub. And um, webhooks, uh, the great thing about webhooks is that uh, if you're using automation, they are very simple and easy to configure. So that is all I wanted to talk about uh, in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.